bridge topic in the viva world of anatomy is scapula bone. The another name of the scapula bone is a shoulder blade. Now it is a flat triangular shaped bone which situated at the posterior lateral aspect of a thoracic cage against second to seventh rib. Now first we will see the side determination of the scapula. To determine the side determination again we will we should keep in our mind the three points. One is anterior posterior, second medial lateral and third superior inferior. First we will see the antero or posterior aspect. Coracoid process is facing anterior. The second medial lateral. The large glenoid cavity is facing laterally. Third superior inferior. The thick lateral border is extending from the glenoid cavity above to the inferior angle below. That means the glenoid cavity should face laterally as well as superior. So the given scapula is of, of right side. Now we will see the feature and the attachment of the scapula. It is heavy. Two surface, three border, three angle, and three processes. First, we will talk about the two surfaces. The two surfaces are the coastal surface and the dorsal surface. First, talking about the coastal surface. The coastal surface is concave and it is facing anteriorly and it will fit with the ribs. Now the coastal facet, if you see, it will mark by 3 to 4 oblique ridges, which will provide attachment of a multi panate muscle subscapularis. So, coastal surface give origin to subscapularis muscle. Now talking about the dorsal surface. The dorsal surface is convex. In its upper part, it will provide attachment to the spine of a scapula, which will divide this dorsal surface of the scapula into two parts, the smaller supraspinous fossa and larger infraspinous fossa. And these two fossa are interconnected through spinoglenoid nodes. Now we will see the attachment over the dorsal surface. The smaller supraspinous fossa will give origin to the supraspinatus muscle. This muscle will also originate from the superior surface of the spine of the scapula. The larger infraspinous fossa will give origin to the infraspinatus muscle. This infraspinatus muscle will also originate from the inferior surface of the spine of the scapula. Now the relation over the dorsal surface, this spinoglenoid node, this one, it will uh, provide the passage, the structure passed through this node is suprascapular nerve and suprascapular waist. Now the second feature, that is the border, it is having three border the superior border, medial border and the lateral border. First talking about the superior border. The superior border is very thin and very small. Now at the lateral end of the superior border, near the root of the coracoid process, you will see one nose. This nose is known as a suprascapular nose. Now above the suprascapular nose, it will provide attachment of a suprascapular ligament. Now the important structure passes below this ligament and above this ligament. Yes, of course this ligament will convert this suprascapular nodes into the suprascapular foramen. Now we will see which structure passes below it. The suprascapular nerve will passes below the suprascapular ligament. And the suprascapular artery and the vein that is the suprascapular vessels that will passes above the suprascapular ligament. Superior border near the suprascapular node somewhere here it will give origin to the inferior belly of a homohyoid muscle. Now talking about the second border that is the medial border the uh, longest one. 
it will extend from the superior angle above to the inferior angle below. We will see the attachment over the medial border. For the attachment, the medial border, we will see the, its two aspects, the coastal aspect and the dorsal aspect. The medial border over its coastal aspect receives the insertion of eight slips of serratus anterior muscle. And over the dorsal aspect, the medial border receives the insertion of first levator scapulae muscle extending from the superior angle to the root of a spine of scapula. The second rhomboidus minor that is inserted at the level of the root of spine of scapula and rhomboidus major from the root of spine of scapula to the inferior angle. Now the last border is the lateral border that is the thickest one extending from the glenoid cavity above to the inferior angle. Now the lateral border over its dorsal aspect give origin of two muscles. From its upper two third give origin to the teres minor and from lower one third give origin to the teres major muscle. The next part is it is having three angles that is superior angle inferior angle and the lateral angle. We are talking about the first superior angle that is the angle between the superior, superior border and the medial border. The second angle inferior angle is the angle between the medial border and the lateral border. And the third and the most important is a lateral angle. The lateral angle is also known as a head of the scapula and it will bear the larger glenoid cavity. Now this glenoid cavity will articulate with the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint or glenohumeral joint. The rim of a or the margin of the glenoid cavity provides attachment to the fibrocartilaginous uh, rim that is known as a glenoid labrum. Now the importance of this glenoid labrum, labrum is that it will deepen the glenoid cavity so that the head of the humerus will firmly articulate with the glenoid cavity. Now above the glenoid cavity you will have the supraglenoid uh, tubercle and below you will have the infraglenoid tubercle. Now the supraglenoid tubercle will give origin to the long head of biceps brachii muscle. Infraglenoid tubercle provides attachment to the long head, origin of the long head of the triceps muscle. One thing also you have to remember, the glenoid cavity is a pressure type of the epiphysis. Now the last part in the scapula is the process. It is having three processes. The first one is a spine of scapula or a spinous process of scapula, acromion process, second and the third is a coracoid process. We will see one by one. The first the spine of the scapula, first process, spine of the scapula or the spinous process of the scapula. Now this is a, a, a this process is a triangular plate of the bone that is attached to the dorsal surface of the scapula and yes it divides it into the supraspinous and the infraspinous fossa. Now the spine of the scapula is having two surfaces, superior and, and, and inferior and having three border the anterior, posterior and the lateral. The superior surface will give origin to the part of the supraspinatus muscle and the inferior surface give origin to the part of the infraspinatus muscle. Anterior border of the spinous process will attach to the dorsal uh, aspect of the scapula. Posterior border is a thick which is known as a crest of the spine of the scapula and it is having two lip, upper lip and lower lip. This upper lip will provide insertion of a trapezius muscle and the lower lip will give origin to the deltoid muscle. Now this is the first one. The second is a acromion process. Now the acromion process is an example of the traction epiphysis. It is a flat flattened process which is in direct continuity with the spine of the uh, scapula literally. Now it is having two surfaces, superior, inferior, having one teeth and two border, medial border and the lateral border. Superior surface is subcutaneous, inferior surface is related to the subacromian bursa. Its teeth will provide attachment to the Coracoacromian ligaments. Now, talking about the border, 
on the medial border, somewhat anteriorly, it will show one oval facet which will articulate with the lateral end of the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint, which is a plain variety of the sideroval joint. Now, the attachment, the remaining part of the medial border receives the insertion of a trapezius muscle. The lateral border will show three to four small deltoid tubercle, which will give origin to the uh, acromion fiber of a multi padded deltoid muscle. The, the last process is a coracoid process. The coracoid process is directed forward and somewhat laterally. Now it is also having superior surface, inferior surface, deep, medial border and the lateral border. Now the T of a coracoid process, remember it is an atavistic type of the epiphysis. The coracoid process will provide attachment of a three ligament and three muscle. First we will talk about the muscle. The T of the coracoid muscle give origin to the short head of biceps brachii muscle and the coraco brachialis muscle together. Its medial border and somewhat superior surface will receive the insertion of a pectoralis minor. Now talking about the ligaments. Its lateral border provides attachment to the coraco acromion ligament. First one. Its root will give attachment to the coraco humeral ligament. And third, its superior surface and the root will provide attachment to the coraco clavicular ligament. Now we will see in the last the applied anatomy of the scapula. The first one is the winging of a scapula. It is a clinical condition in which there is a paralysis of a serratus anterior muscle due to injury of its nerve supply that is nerve to serratus anterior or long thoracic nerve. In the winging of scapula, the medial border of the scapula will become undue prominent when the patient is doing the pushing or a punching movement. The second applied anatomy is a scaphoid scapula. Normally, in the scapula, the medial border is a convex medium. But in the scaphoid scapula, the medial border will become uh, concave, literally. The third is a pulsatile scapula. It is a clinical condition which occurs due to the blockage between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery. So, the anastomotic channel around the scapula will open up and you can see the visible pulsation in the area of the scapula that is known as a pulsatile scapula. Now, the last part, we will summarize the scapula. The scapula is having two surfaces, coastal surface, dorsal surface, having three border, superior border, medial border, lateral border, having three angle, superior angle, inferior angle lateral angle and the three processes spine of scapula, acromion process, coracoid process. Now many times in the exam you will be asked the type of the epiphysis present in the scapula. The first one, the glenoid cavity is a pressure type of the epiphysis, acromion process is a traction type of the epiphysis and the teeth of the coracoid process is an atavistic type of the epiphysis. If you like our video, like it, subscribe it and share with your friends.